Hey everybody, I know it's been a while since I've posted a video. I might do another video explaining why I've been gone for a while, but this video right now is important. It's kind of spontaneous, but it's important. I've decided that I'm going on a tour of my childhood neighborhood in hopes that I'd be able to process the initial trauma that I went through. I feel like it's going to be hard to process because it's the very first few years of my life where my development was crucial and I was just burdened with trauma and abuse. And I talked about it with my therapist. She says, if, th if I think that this is going to help me process, then go right ahead. But just make sure that I'm not overdoing it. I'm going to have my Ativan with me. I would like to feel all the emotions. I want to remember everything and just let myself feel whatever I need to feel. I'm also looking for maybe answers maybe some memories that i don't remember like i would like to unlock some memories possibly because i'm also working on my next book it's gonna be a autobiography about me growing up autistic and it, it's gonna talk a lot about my childhood and I really don't want to miss any important details. So I feel like maybe going back to that neighborhood will maybe spark some new memories that maybe I pushed I pushed away. I can't really remember at the moment. So I can make sure that my book is detailed as possible. There's many reasons why I want to do this. And those are the two main reasons why this needs to get done. But I'm going to take you guys along with me. We dropped the kids off. Now we are on our way to the neighborhood. I'm actually a little bit anxious. I already took my Ativan. We're approaching the neighborhood. I'm so damn anxious. Down this hill. And so it begins. This is where it all started. We parked a car and now I'm going up the back of the building where I used to just hang out and look for cats. I'm gonna show you guys. I used to come over here all the time and look for cats. There used to be an opening over here where I would go to the other side and then hop over that fence and look for more cats. And these windows right here are actually where we lived. I'm just going to take a moment to sit and process. This part here is the hardest part because this is where it all started. And just looking at this building, it's almost like I could hear myself screaming. Sounds like I can hear myself screaming. And it just reminds me about how the neighbors did nothing. They did nothing. All my screams, all my cries for help. Almost every night and nobody did a damn thing about it. really shitty.
I remember crying about something and then my stepmaster would scream at me he would say Cállate, coño. and then because I had echolalic speech I repeated it back while crying Cállate, coño. and he would think that I was mocking him and he would beat me even more for that It's a lot of shit that went down in this, in this building. It's actually very hard to look at this building. I could feel my inner child screaming right now. I could hear myself screaming in that damn building. Nobody did a damn thing about it. to show you guys this location over here it's in the parking lot that's behind the building i used to wander around in those wooded areas and i actually found two cats that i brought home when i was little hopping fences climbing things we're headed over to the park i'm overflowing with internal emotions but for some reason i can't externally let it out i don't know what that means i distinctly remember finding a gray tabby over here i tried to get it to fit from over here and it did fit i took it home i used to climb this over here be all up on the roof. I don't even know how I did that, but I, I remember I used to climb this shit and jump right off of it. Never got hurt though. We're at climbing the wall. See, none of this equipment was here when I was growing up. This is new shit. The swings used to be over there, not over there. And the playground was metal. Like the playground itself was metal, not plastic looking. I'm gonna go and let my inner child discover this playground. I just want to swing. I remember one time it was raining really hard and it just got flooded over here. And I really acted like it was a swimming pool or something. I was just swimming away. People were saying, get out of there, that's disgusting. I found it fun. Well, since people don't want to get off the fucking swings, I didn't get a chance to swing. 
So we're just gonna continue this little tour. You see this hill? I used to always roll down that hill. I would go up, roll down. That was my thing that I used to do. What I'm really gonna show you guys is how I almost lost my life because some girls decided it was a good idea to grab me and try to throw me over onto the train tracks with the train coming. I never forgot that. The audacity of some people. I used to always come down over here and play because apparently kids didn't want to play with me in the playground. So I would come over here and I'm fine. I just busted my ass over here. This is where I used to hang out. My damn palm hurts now. I won't be able to show you guys, but behind all these bushes, there's the train tracks and that's where it all happened. I mean, little girl me would go exploring, but I'm not touching none of that shit now moving along to a place where I was really excited to show you guys. They figured out how to take it the fuck down. There used to be this big fucking bush over here and it was droopy. It had this little entrance to where it, like it became a clubhouse to me and it, it was just laid out so perfect to be a clubhouse and it's like not here at all. And that's pretty upsetting. We're going down to the pier now but I'm actually going to show you the train tracks. This is not the location where I was almost thrown, but these are the train tracks that I would have been thrown on. It's bullshit, isn't it? It's really fucked up. People are shitty like that. I used to go up in here. You can't see it now, but there there was a branch that I used on the tree back there and I would just be swinging back and forth, swinging back and forth and it was a strong ass fucking thing too but one time I got on it and the shit snapped and I busted my ass never did that shit again this is the Hudson River it says no swimming but of course I never listened. I would always get in there and swim. I used to go all the way around where those rocks are and I would just sit in the water. That's where I used to do a lot of my thinking. And I would stay there for hours just trying to process the daily abuse that I was going through at home. Anything nature, water, anything with tree climbing, those were my things as a little girl to escape my reality for a little bit. We're done at the pier. We're heading back to the car, but I just wanted to point out this tree right here and tell you guys a little story time. I found a baby squirrel over here. I couldn't find the mother and I decided to take it home with me. Cause I didn't understand that, you know, wild animals are supposed to leave outdoors in the wild. But no, I would just take whatever animal I would find and take it home. Well, a little squirrel died that night with me. I was sad. And now that we're heading back to the car, I think it's really strange how I'm having a delayed reaction to this whole thing. I'm really starting to feel everything right now. And so this is actually painful. I think I went through this experience very nicely. Right now I'm just overflowing with a bunch of emotions that I can't pinpoint what it is and I'm starting to get upset 
in a way because I can't figure it out. I'm just fucking building. I'm gonna get in the car. chest hurts. I didn't get to swing on the swings. I think that's, that, that might even be a big thing that's throwing me off. Okay. Avenue, 